Hey everyone, Jeff Lee here from Able City, joined today by Michael Best, Product Manager of Professional Camera Accessories over at Airy. Thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. Thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure. So we're here to talk today about the brand new Hi5 wireless follow focus system. So it's the successor to the very much so loved WCU4. So fifth generation as indicated by the five. But yes. And then the high you were saying is the handheld and sort of uh, intelligent, and that's kind of where you guys got the acronym a little bit inverted. Yeah, so the code word is <laughs> kind of backwards. It's fifth generation intelligent hand unit. Got it. So. But, yeah, but obviously high five sounds better than yes. H5. If, if five. <laughs> it's a celebration. Yeah, it's absolutely. Good. So it's great. You know, obviously the WCU4, SXU, you know, vulnerable in the, you know, uh, especially the AC and focus pulling community. So it's, it's great to see that all the different innovations uh, so we want to talk and kind of focus, no pun intended, on all the new developments. Uh, starting with, I think, kind of the thing that you folks have left off, with, started off with in all of your, um, you know, marketing and, and literature, which is the range and the increase, yeah, in, 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 in strength that way. So we talked a little bit about the radios and how that works, and now it's all modular, which is great. And I think the first thing we should mention is that it's backwards compatible. So exactly. if you have anything with a white band antenna, whether it's on a camera or on a C4, you know, RF motor or whatnot, it's always backwards compatible. We're just talking about the new future stuff. So right. can you chat a little bit about kind of the, the concept behind the interchangeable uh, RF modules? Sure, sure, but first let me just start off to say we're proud of our predecessors, WCU4 sure. and SXU. WCU4 started in 2012, that's when it was announced. So it's been around for quite a long time and um, all the ideas, all the feedback, all the criticism we got from our clients, we've taken that, mm -hmm. we've tried to incorporate that in the WCU4, but for the things we couldn't, we had to wait for the next generation, and, and here we go. So this is further, stronger, faster is our tagline. Right. So uh, to your point, our, our standard radio, a white radio, which communicates with our cameras and our current motor controllers, um, is 2.4 gigahertz uh, spread spectrum. So, you know, you dial in your channel, you have 14 channels, zero through 13, and you pair that up, and that's how the two devices talk. Uh, the two additional radios, which gives it more range, is, um, the, is a 2400 frequency hopping, and the second is 900 megahertz frequency hopping as well. Um, so, the the frequency hopping is when you're in a, an environment um, where there's tremendous interference, like everyone's using wireless these days. Right. The, um, it's a very complex and challenging environment, um, whether it's wireless, video, audio, lighting is now. Yeah. So when you're checking out, usually everything works perfectly, but then you go into the set environment and there's all these other variables and wireless signals are, are invisible. So what do you do? I mean, as an AC or any technician, whatever department you're in using wireless, um, you just need things to work because time is precious on set. Um, so um, in order to combat these challenging circumstances, um, we came out with those two additional radios. So the 2400 uh, frequency hopping, um, that channel hops between a hundred different channels automatically. And what's cool about that is that um, you can kind of, they're swappable through you know, your rental inventory. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have them paired up. The way you pair them up is um, it's a virtual channel which just connects them, but all the technology, all the frequency hopping to um, hold on to the strongest channels and avoid any fallout is happening behind the scenes in the technology. So right. you don't have to worry about it. Right, it's so nice. it's invisible to the user. But we're yeah. taking advantage of all the additional spectrum, but, uh, we, but it, it's painless essentially for the crews and for the folks managing these radios, whether it's at a rental house or a personal fleet. Yep. And then of course having multiple um, modules means that right now we're using, like you mentioned, 900 and 2.4, but in the future, you know, as clearance uh, changes for different frequency ranges, you could uh, as that comes around, come up with new modules if all of a sudden we're allowed to use different uh, spectrums, which means this is extremely future-proof and never worried about, you know, we have this issue slightly off topic where sometimes wireless microphones, for example, 
you know, you're in a certain range, like the 500 uh, megahertz, and all of a sudden that range has been allocated by the FCC in the United States for a different product, and you're no longer allowed to use that. Or even if you try to, it's extremely cluttered, and you can't punch through. So I think that's incredibly smart. That means that this is essentially very future-proof. And if something like that happens where they deem certain b bands illegal or not, you just pop a new radio in once it's available. Yeah, easily swappable. Yeah. Doesn't have to go through service. You just get a new one, pop it in. Right. Whether that's um, uh, through our RIA, radio face interface adapter, which is the motor controller version. Mm. Um, but also you can make other devices wireless using that. Or the Hi5. Right. So that's a, actually a good question. So naturally on the hand unit itself, on the Hi5, we have a little module for the RF. Um, and right now we have the one that'll work with the existing white band radios. But on a, let's say, a, uh, a legacy product or um, something that doesn't have the new frequencies built in, how would one attach their camera or their motors to the new Hi5 if you're using the new 2.4 or 900 megahertz uh, frequency hopping module? Right, that's where the radio, face, uh, radio interface adapter, RIA, is the acronym. Um, that's where that comes in. So, say for Alexa Mini, mm -hmm. you could turn the radio off on the Mini um, and turn on the radio on the RIA and use the 900 megahertz and pair that up. Um, right. From what I was told, you could use both radios at once. Okay. So, if someone's closer to the camera, right. um, they could connect to the white radio as standard, uh, communicate through the camera and get lens data. And maybe a DIT who might be far right. away, who wants to stay parked and plugged into power and not move, and um, they could be on a different frequency or you know a different range. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's great. And obviously, you can still run it cabled. You know, there's still LBUS connectors physically. So whether it's tethered directly to a camera or to uh, maybe even like an SRH you know, controlled deck, right? And yes. You can pass all those lens commands through if you're, let's say, on a, on a crane or something where you're yes. cabled. Right. Yes, even Filmatechnic's Russian arm. Mm, right. Um, if you can plug this in for um, the Zoom protocol through their control panel, right. there's a serial port on the back. So there's a lot more flexibility right. in this. So focus rings, of course, you can use some of the previous uh, focus Pre-mark rings from the WCU4, uh, but sure. of course now that we have the new intelligent ones. So for yes. we're here, you can actually see there's a little chip on these uh, yes. that communicates directly with the WCU, uh, the Hi5. I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah, right here is uh, this RFID chip, and uh, if I slide this ring off, you see these two pogo pins, and and on the screen here. Yeah, as you did that, we saw immediately it turned off. So once you click yeah. it back in, so I pop it back in and lights up. Oh, there it is. That's great. So no, no longer are you going into it and saying, you know, which scale am I using? The faster. Be, right. That's faster fantastic. setup, faster establishing um, a change in your setup. Great. Yeah, and there's a lot of other neat things about it, too. Obviously, the physical characteristics haven't changed a lot in, in a good way because the WCU already was very ergonomic. So you, yes. you've modeled that a little bit. You've added things like a NATO rail to accommodate a monitor yeah. bracket or other accessories. Yes. Uh, you know, if the AC wants to attach the monitor directly, they can certainly do so. So speaking of which, mm -hmm. uh, this is the new monitor bracket. We have um, a strong rosette for tilting capability. We have this little channel here that has an indent, so when you do slide it on the NATO rail, it slides right on, but it's not gonna slide off. So there's some safety features built into that. It'll tighten down very strongly. Um, this little feature I love the most, this is ingenious. Um, this is a quarter 20 screw. Um, it, it's, um, you don't need tools, you could just uh, tighten it with by hand, but if you have the anti-twist pins incorporated into the base of your monitor, you can flip this oh, and you cool. see it'll incorporate with that. But if not, you don't have to worry about removing them or shaving them off, as some people have done in the past, you just flip it back. Right, that's incredibly smart. <laughs> So it kind of le lends itself to that efficiency uh, on set, quick workflow. Just yeah. like you said, neural knob just to get your monitor on or off. It's clean, it's clever, it's simple. So yeah. making it fast, I think. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and even things like uh, battery swaps, that's another thing. You don't want to go down, potentially put the battery back in, and then it, it might ask you to recalibrate or you know those type of workflow things that ACs often find you know challenges on set. So speaking of ergonomics, you've completely redesigned or rethought how an AC might even wear it on set. Yeah. So long hours, um, we understand, you know, ACs for the most part, 
pulling off a monitor and they might have this rigged up to a C stand. But when there's run and gun, you got to move around a lot. Um, we have the shoulder strap, so it attaches to the base of the high five and the top left so that when you just hold it like here, it just kind of stays, stays upright on your belly if you need to. Mm -hmm. But as usual, ACs need to go into a case, get down, get their stuff, change a lens or what have you, and boom, you're back up and running. Previously, the WCU-4 only had it on its base, so it would just dangle. Right. So, a small improvement, but I think significant. Yeah, absolutely. And he even thought like these little neoprene sliders that cover the, um, mm -hmm. so they don't accidentally come unclipped and or just prevent rattle because it's now soft yep. fabrics touching soft things. Exactly. Uh, or it doesn't damage the high five. You just slip it right. on and off. Very simple. Yeah. Quick, right. fast. <laughs> and efficient. We like that. Yep. Now there's got a hot swap capability, mm -hmm. meaning you pull the battery out of the bottom of the sled, right? And then... Yeah, so um, you just uh, open the door on the bottom. It's good to do this um, while the high five's upside down. Right. You slide out the battery. Um, it's still on. Yeah, you can see the screen is still on, actually. Yep. It's, just, and it's I'm, dimmed, I'm taking naturally. my time here. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we've calculated up to like 20, 25 seconds. Um, so that's, that's plenty of time to switch this battery. Yeah, so then you're not down, you just pop a new battery in, and you can even do it mid-shot. The system is still on and sending commands. Is that correct, or when it's in that mode, or? Um, yeah, well, it kind of dims down. Right. So it's not like you're gonna operate it at all, but um, it won't have to boot down and boot back up, which, you know, um, if the sun's going down or there's a crucial shot you need to get and every second counts, I've been in that situation myself as a camera assistant, right. this, is, this is perfect for those situations. Right. And in batteries, of course, it will work with the classic Sony sort of L series batteries, but Airy has also <laughs> released and designed a series of batteries and chargers yourselves with a little bit of intelligence as well, talking back to the high five and, and communicating to the battery. Exactly. So on top of the, uh, the screen, mm -hmm. is um, it says 64% here. So that's how much life the battery has. Right. It's very accurate all down to the last percentage. Right. So you know exactly what you have. Not only that, but these batteries last roughly up to 15 hours. Oh, so that's, that's pretty much a day. Yeah, that you know? at least. And hopefully it's not a day anymore, right? We have less hours <laughs> on set. <laughs> yes, of course, if you're following the news, of course, that's hopefully <laughs> happening uh, as the negotiate, uh, negotiations happen, so. Been um, there, yeah. <laughs> done that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, we, and you know, there's programmable buttons as well, right? So you still have the uh, classic control of the, of the wheel and the slider um, and the thumb joystick for your focus hours and zoom, but then of yeah. course you have uh, additional programmable buttons as well located uh, you know, on the back here I see. But can you get a little bit into sort of the interface, which you know a lot of folks are already very comfortable and familiar with because it mirrors in some ways the Alexa style of menus where you have the three buttons above exactly. and three buttons below. Yeah, so let me touch upon that and show what the updates are and sure. why we changed it. So one of the first upgrades we made is um, what the WC4 is more of a ratcheting system. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great system, people like it, but um, this is cleaner and a lot easier to um, adjust the friction on, right. um, as, as well as easier to service. Right. Um, so that's one, one upgrade. And um, uh, in addition to the knob, you can go into the menu and ch you change the backlight colors on here. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, okay. Yeah, so you can color code it, white, red, blue, magenta, green, yellow. Maybe there's something else in there I'm forgetting. Um, but um, so a lot of, you know, no problem with a five camera shoot, that's for sure. Right. Um, uh, turning around, um, normally on the WCU4, we had a user button on top, it was a red button, which was kind of awkward to get to. And again, this is feedback from um, uh, our clients. Um, so, We've upgraded the buttons. These are all uh, weatherproof. They're all sealed, so no water's gonna get in there. Um, but we now have three customizable buttons. Uh, it's a very tactile feel. Um, you get this triangle feel in between them. The bottom one has an indent, and then you know one and two. Um, so without looking at it, right. you, you know you can quickly, again, fast change things around. If you want to turn on and off peaking on your monitor if you're pulling focus, turn on and off, I don't know, the, the uh, uh, status of the camera, uh, false color. Um, if you want to um, maybe get a screen grab, mm. 
or the other common ones, maybe the ND in the uh, Mira or the Mini or the Mini LF, you can adjust them that way. Um, so it's up to the user. Um, we try to give more features, add more flexibility, thus making it faster to right. operate on set. And you mentioned weatherproof too, so I think it's worth touching upon that you, you've tested this in you know basically extreme conditions in terms of temperature shifts from the hottest you know desert shoot environment to the coldest uh, shoot locations, but also it's now uh, water resistant as well. So if it got a little splash, a little rain, it's not going to damage anything. Yeah. So this is um, the most water resistant electronic product we have. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go swimming with it, right? Of course. But. Um, and, you know, in some heavy rain, I think it, it'll hold up, you know. Obviously, you, you want to protect yourself, you know. We don't have like a rating, right. but we're confident that it'll hold up, you know. I, I wouldn't uh, test its boundaries in right. like torrential rain, um, but, but we think it'll hold up. Right, I think it, more to the point, more than anything, I think it's just alleviates that factor of, you know, if you're an AC thinking, okay, do I need to get undercover? <laughs> Or can I just get, go out, follow the camera, let's say, and, and the camera's p potentially covered, yes. and just pull focus in this rain shot, in this special effect shot where we have some water coming in, and not like have to worry about you know wrapping it and we're staying you know in, somewhere behind uh, you know where these rain or, or water effects might be. So I think it's just additional speed, I would say, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, just you, get the shot. Right. You could be confident that you could go out there in those conditions and get the shot. Definitely. Right. Yeah, again, uh, we're not, no one should go swimming with it or submerge it with any means whatsoever, but uh, it, it's nice to know that, you know, the confidence is there, you know, from the manufacturing side that you can get it, uh, you know, in some kind of nasty environments that we often find ourselves shooting in. Absolutely. In terms of, uh, you know, weather and climate. So, uh, why don't you go a little bit into the menus, because I know, of course, some of the menu stuff has, of course, changed and been improved. I've noticed personally off the, right off the bat, is that it's much more legible to me. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think part of it is maybe font or color choices, but it just pops right off of the screen. Um, yeah. So the, love the, resol the resolution of the screen is a little finer. Right. So, so then uh, you had also mentioned earlier that you know even things like the focus scale, you can increase or decrease the size of. Um, essentially, yeah. it's, it, by pinching the zoom, is that is that correct? Yeah. If you want to have just a little bit more detail, um, it's kind of hard to do that here. If I, I kind of expand my fingers as you would do on any cell phone, right. but if to reset it, I just tap it, and it'll reset itself. Right, and certain lenses have kind of a really narrow range of, you know, the, the witness marks are sometimes so close together. Yeah, sometimes be 10 and 15 feet, yeah. or, you know, where it could be crucial if you're on an 85 or 100 mil lens. Right, certainly with larger yeah. sensors, longer focal lengths, I think yeah. that's cr crucial that you can if you want, as an operator, just basically swipe or pinch and then be able to magnify on the scale a little bit. Uh, so one of the other developments, of course, with the High Five uh, is kind of more future forward things, is if I buy it today and I'm an Alexa shooter, uh, but maybe in a couple of months I become a Red shooter or, or a Venice shooter, yeah. uh, the fact that, that you have licensing built into this uh, to give it full ca you know, camera control, and there's a great chart on the website that kind of shows what each of the licenses can or can't do based on limitations from the other third-party cameras. Exactly. But can you get a little bit into that, you know, the idea of, you know, how to load a license and, and what licenses are available? Sure. Um, well, the Hi5 automatically comes with the uh, Alexa remote license, mm -hmm. as we call it. Um, so for all ARRI cameras, a Mira, uh, Alexa Mini, uh, Alexa Mini LF, and, and so on. Um, but uh, optionally, um, if you do have a RED camera, we, we you go on our website and you can uh, download the license off there or for Sony Venice, mm -hmm. um, Panavision DXL, um, as well as two other licenses for other accessories, uh, C-Motion's Cinefade Variable ND Great. and uh, the Cine RT's Focus Bug. So. Right, so that incorporates the data, uh, you know, whether it's the, the, ho the horns or the, 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 what is it called, the focus tag? Yes, the focus tag. Mm -hmm. And that data will be incorporated onto the, the high five screen, essentially. So yeah, so there's some parameters you might have to adjust um, that will allow you to do that through the high five for, yeah. for the focus bug. Excellent. Yeah, and again, as things develop, you know, kind of the beauty of it is that it's a developing product. So as new cameras come to market or, or new products, you know, like the variable ND is a great uh, example of that. As more innovative products like that come out to market, you know, you'd be able to support it with, uh, you know, license or and a supplemental update. On, yeah. on software. It's a whole new platform that has plenty of uh, room to move in the future. Yeah, which is really nice. 
Um, and I would love if you could show us a little bit of the menus too. I, I want to show everyone uh, who hasn't seen it yet what the menu structure looks like and, sure. and how that's improved, uh, you know, from from like say the WCU4 if you're used to that, what it looks like the differences are might be. Okay. Well, we'll start up top sure. and uh, work our way across. There is a uh, so all these buttons on top um, corp in, uh, correlate uh, to the menu positions below, and as you see, it's also touchscreen. So I could just tap here. And now we're in the calibration uh, menu, and I can use this zoom pad, um, or we call it a force pad, um, to navigate uh, left, right, going in or out, um, or down. And um, so here, you can calibrate all the motors, focus iris zoom, um, or a mount manual calibration. Mm -hmm. So manual calibration is important because if you're using a, um, a photo lens or some kind of delicate lens where, um, you know, uh, traditionally when you calibrate, uh, the mechanics in the uh, lens stop it or know right. where the end points are, like infinity hard, and close. stops, right. Mm -hmm. So with other lenses that might infinitely turn, like a, a photo lens on the focus or you know, other, there's, there's so much glass out there. Um, this gives the user more flexibility to use many more lenses out there so they could just dial in their end stops. Right. So that's a great feature. And then the last thing, lens file transfer cal. So if you know what you're doing, when you send the file to the camera, as a safety feature, sometimes it automatically calibrates. So if you check that off, it'll save you time. Mm -hmm. It won't automatically calibrate. Okay. So it's kind of a, a faster way of, of establishing a lens file. Um, so if I hit page, it'll bring me back to the home screen here. And then lens on top are all my lens files. So I can tap in there. And right. as you can see, these are various uh, lenses we mapped. And then I could go out of it using that or the, or the back button down below. Uh, here's our lens programming. Um, and we also have, it's not active right now, but manual T-stops. This is another great feature. Um, say you're, you're starting out, you want to get into the Aerie ecosystem, mm -hmm. and your budgets are a little bit constrained, and you can afford maybe one motor and the high five, but you want depth of field. So you can uh, manually um, add in T-stops. So the high five will take that information and based on where you are the lens, it'll factor in the depth of field for you. Oh, that's really clever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what else do we have down? Circle of confusion, as we're talking about different sensor sizes, right? right. We have uh, Alexa 65, we have the LF, large format, and regular Super 35, as well as uh, 16 mm -hmm. uh, mil, um, uh, Super 16 in our camera, if people want to shoot in that format or if they're just shooting film, right? Right. Um, and then uh, display default. Um, I guess, you know, that's some kind of standard thing. Um, the next is radio, which is very straightforward. Go into here, you could turn on and off power, choose your region and, um, and the channel you're on. Right. All right. And <clears throat> on the bottom here, um, this is great. Uh, this helps clean up the menu. So if you don't want to see so much more, so much information while you're shooting, you can clear out um, the data that's on here. Well, that was on. Now that's off. So that was the zoom data. So it's it's a lot a lot cleaner. Now all you're seeing is the battery. BT uh, stands for Bluetooth. Right. Your time code. It's recording and also the voltage voltage of the battery. So that's always key to see all the time and what your pre-marked ring is. Right. Um, so I could just turn all those back on and down here is a function button. The function button, there's uh, un underneath the zoom, there's three dashes. So it kind of tells you what page you're on. So this is the first page. The second page is if you want to put vibration marks into your iris, zoom, or focus. Um, you can also lock any of the motors, so it might be good to lock your iris motor while you're shooting. You don't want to bump that by accident. Um, and then the third page 
is if you want to set limits. So mm -hmm. if you want to do an iris pull, say from a four, and uh, if you're going to go outside, you might close down a couple of stops to an eight. So you could just limit that range. You don't have to even think about it. Right. So you just grab that lever and slide all the way down, and then you're at your predefined. Yep. And if you want to do like a snap focus into something that's steady, you can set a limit on that. That's a good example. And for the zoom as well, if you're zooming into something right. that's very specific composition. Right. So these are great, great features. It's always been in the WCU4 and the SXU as well, but I, I think some people just um, don't, don't know about them. So, and then we're back here. So um, that's basically the main page. And now um, the page button on top will bring you to um, your camera setup. So this mm -hmm. is if you want to change all the camera para parameters remotely. Um, and in addition to if you want to ingest a uh, camera user setup that you've been, um, um, that you're used to, or um, what else do we have? Oh, SDI out and uh, playback. You can remotely control right. playback from here. Um, the second page button then gets you into the menu of the high five. So this is where you're going to select if you're going to have auto. Uh, set on for pre-marked rings, so it high five mm -hmm. automatically recognizes them, or you're going to go in and you'll see that um, you could have none or um, or require a specific one. Right. Control setup is um, what your knob is going to control as well as your slider. So traditionally, it's focus, I resume, and this is great for a certain amount of people, but left-handed mode. Right. So. Let's, what does that do? Well, I could check it, and it just turns it upside down, and then we'll have de dedicated um, lefty pre-marked rings as well. So that'll be in the right orientation as well. That's great. Um, and then uh, if you want to disable this touch screen for whatever reason, you know, maybe you don't want to hit anything by mistake. Some people might prefer that. Right. Or disable this force pad, which is what I'm pressing here. Yeah, I can uh, see that with if you're in those water conditions we described, that sometimes water affects the sensitivity of a touch screen, so you just disable it to eliminate yeah. that. Or cold weather, gloves, yep. things like that. Yep. So, um, and what else? So I'll go back into the menu, and th that was the motor setup, and then you want to orient your motors correctly, maybe mm -hmm. turn up and down the torque, um, your user setups as it applies to, you know, the three user buttons on right. here, your backlights, and just more of the standard stuff like audio. You right. want this to beep on and off when you start and stop the camera, or do you want that silent? And then um, programming the user buttons. Right. You know, what, it, what do you well want it, it to do? Do you want to do focus tracking, a zoom zap, um, uh, initiate a knob marker, which is the haptic, the vibration, um, slider marker, force pad, peaking, so on, so on, so. Right. So a lot of, uh, a lot of options here. You mentioned previously too Bluetooth, so that's something that mm -hmm. is part of the new app for your phone, currently iOS only, I believe. Uh, right, that will for the beginning, for we'll, the beginning. we'll hopefully, uh, yeah. We plan to um, have it available for Android as well. Right, understood. So then with the new app, uh, you're able to, uh, and, like what are, what are the controls you're able to do? I, know, I believe there's firmware updates and you know, lens tables and whatnot, so like, what, what does the app bring to this that uh, was not previously available? Yeah, so um, the Bluetooth dongle is located underneath this like little cover and it kind of snaps open. Mm. Um, I don't know if you get that there. Yep. And um, so that's where that lives. And um, so for my iPhone, I'll go to settings, Bluetooth, and I'll connect to this and I'll say the serial number, the high five. Now we're communicating. Um, and uh, if I map a lens file on here, now it's in this memory. It's the, in the memory of the high five. I can then wirelessly transfer it to my phone, mm -hmm. which I can then email to, to you. Say you're going to day play a lens. I'm going to loan you a lens, and here's the file for you. Or if you're a rental house, you might have your own library of right. lenses, and uh, you can send that to the first AC out on set. Um, or um, when we come out with a firmware update for any of our products, whether it's high five, OCU1, which is the operator control unit, any of our motors, as new cameras come out, motors need uh, updated firmware to communicate with them as well. Mm -hmm. So 
the ECS uh, Sync app will give you push notifications so that you're always up to date on the latest firmware and that should make things, you know, roll a lot smoother for, for everybody. There's so many different devices, so many electronic devices, there are all these factors uh, when it comes to firmware. So that's great. And uh, airy news, you'll get airy news, frequently asked questions, and hopefully we'll be putting in um, all the manuals in there right. so you have that at your fingertips. But um, yeah, um, you can save your user settings. So if you don't own a High Five, but you go to rental houses and you use it as an AC, you can always have that app, save your user settings, have your own files in there, keep your own library as well. It's, it's easy. It's, no, so uh, that makes a ton of sense because often ACs don't have laptops on the set or aren't going to grab an SD card or a USB stick and true. try to do this in the heat of you know, the action, but we all have our phones on us, so when you have a couple of minutes downtime, you fire up the app, like you mentioned. Users, user files and the lens tables, like that's incredibly um, efficient you know, for someone working on set. But speaking of which, it is backwards compatible. So mm -hmm. we have USB, traditional USB sure. on the bottom, but USB on top. So um, I have this little um, dongle thing. So USB-C, it's kind of indented in there. Mm -hmm. So this fits perfectly in there. Well, some of those thumb drives, they won't fit inside. So just be aware of that. So I just, a USB-C to USB. So if I do um, want to update this way, right. or I do want to save files this way, or what have you, you do have this as a backup. Right. But uh, one more thing to mention about this, this is great is that you don't need, if you want to connect to AC power, um, or if for whatever reason you run out of battery power, mm -hmm. I don't know, they turn off the generator at night and you realize you don't have any more batteries, you can use a power bank, connect USB-C to USB-C and right. get power that way or power through AC. So just some computer cable that most people have right. uh, already. Your phone, your phone charger even in the this. gym. Yeah. yeah, so no, you know, airy proprietary cable. It's just uh, some ubiquitous cables. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. I, I, I love, and it's very clear to me uh, that you you have taken all the feedback. From yes. All the users, all the ACs, yes. the rental houses. And it's kind of like We're all the wish list things of everything that everyone's wanted. And it's very modern and very future forward, which is something that... Uh, is very apparent, I think, when just looking at it or just talking to you about this. So. We're always open for people to approach us with the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, we want to know. Because right. sometimes we can fix the ugly or improve the bad, <laughs> or, uh, but it's also nice to hear good things. But we can't improve when we're always hearing good things all the time. So, um, so for everyone who's ever given us feedback, thank you. <laughs> And uh, hopefully, you know, you like this high five. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So yeah, we're looking forward to, you know, I think this will become the new industry, you know, fleet standard, you know, right now, for example, in, in a lot of rental houses, we'll see a, a shelf full of WCUs. I, I certainly see this becoming that new <laughs> replacement. Um, but of course, you know, WCU has, has been an industry workhorse for a reason, and I think it will continue to be around. But it's it great to be. see the evolution. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And cross-compatible still with SXU, right? So if you, you mentioned that example earlier, of maybe yeah. splitting the roles between, let's say, a DIT and the AC, mm -hmm. that all that compatibility still works, and all the great accessories like the master grips and the uh, OCU, all of that is still going to work within this greater ecosystem. Yeah. So it's not replacing anything per se. It's just sort of an evolution, would you say? I would say. Um, so a lot, also the feedback we get from onset is like sometimes a, a director of photography wants to have a wireless zoom and mm -hmm. sitting at the monitor with the director and they want to maybe do a creep shot and so um, the RIA together with a master grip or a pan bar zoom um, you could make that wireless and um, and all the other uh, L bus devices that way so again that continues to expand the ecosystem in that way. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Michael. This is uh, a lot of information, but this is really great to kind of get this really in-depth uh, demo and walkthrough with you. So I really appreciate you, uh, you coming in and showing, uh, showing us all these new exciting features and toys. It's my pleasure. So yeah, thank you again. Really appreciate it, uh, and thank you, of course, for watching. Uh, please let us know. Um, you know, if there's any comments, of course, and we really appreciate the fact that you, you know, Ari is listening and, and developing and improving as things go along. <laughs> so I think that just about wraps us up here for today. But again, thank you so much for joining us. 
Thank you for watching. Appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time.